Hello, and welcome back to the Fox Strength and Performance YouTube channel. I am Taylor Fox, and today we're talking about some different shoulder rehab, rehab concepts, different exercises you can do for overhead mobility, pressing ability. Been putting together some programs for clients and also for myself. I probably need it more than anyone. Gonna go through some different exercises that I've incorporated lately to try to really build things up, but also like get it to the point where you can really get that good overhead position, look athletic, look explosive. And you see like with Nationals just passed, America's Strongest Man, like a lot of these athletes are just really able to get in these good positions and are really efficient with the implements and that's how they're doing so well, as well as being just brutally strong. So let's get into it. All right, so what I'm looking to do here, I'm gonna get down on the ground, try to keep my shoulders in a good position, resting as far on the ground as I can, raise the kettlebell up into lockout. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna drive the shoulder further into the back of the socket. And then I'm just gonna hang out here and really allow that humerus to settle in the back of the shoulder socket. And if you have like rounded shoulders or forward shoulders, this can be a good drill to just kind of improve on that positioning pre training. And I'll do it on both sides. To see if like wherever that gap is for my shoulder, the weight should allow that to settle a little bit further back in the socket. And it'll just hang out here. And I'll get up from this and I find that my shoulders just feel dramatically better. And really the only thing to it is just like settle in and, and just wait. And this is only a 20 pound kettlebell, but eventually you can go up to like 35, 45 just enough weight to where you can really get that that joint to settle in the in the right position so this next one is going to be a 90 90 external rotation on the cable now the way i've been prescribing it is kind of just doing like a halfway rotation to start do five repetitions and then we'll go full for five repetitions and then i'm going to do full and a hold for that last five and we're going to use pretty light weight here so you want to try to keep this as a rotator cuff movement don't make it a a rear delt movement or anything else like that with compensation so try to be real strict and just keep the weight light and working through those full ranges of motion efficiently So this next one, you can use a band or you can actually just continue to use the cable, whatever your preference is. I just find setting up a band is easy. This will often be called a D2 pattern flexion exercise in more like therapeutic clinical settings. Just to not confuse anybody, I like put it in programs as like a cross body raise or cross body flexion. But what you're doing is you wanna imagine like you have a sword like hilted here. So the first part, you're taking the sword out, and then the second part, you're raising the sword up in the air. So just grab the band like this, so thumb facing the hip, and then you're just raising and turning. So when you come back down, you want to be internally rotated, and when you come up, you want to externally rotate. And you can even do this like with the band on your foot. I just find it convenient having the rack and the band pins. All right, this will probably be one where you're like, why did I get myself into this? So you're gonna need a foam roller and then some type of band, whether it be an elastic band, like a TheraBand, or like one of the hip circles. I love these, like the athletic pack. 
they work really well for a lot of different things. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the band around your wrists. Of course I did this well. So foam roller up on the rack upright, or you can use a wall band around the wrists. You want to come out so that you have tension along the band and you want to keep that tension on the band the whole time. So keeping those elbows in a good position. And then you're just going to roll up and down. And if you need to reset it all, that's okay. But just try to make each rep the same, good quality, keep in touch on that band the whole time. Probably a little bit of a small foam roller for me, but that's what I got. So we work with what we got, right? All right, so we're going to get into a couple of the ground-based ones, two for push-up positions. The first one is just a shoulder tap. So you're literally from a push-up position, just reaching up, tapping your shoulders. You want to establish a wider base. No one's expecting you to be narrow as you would for a normal push-up and balance on one arm like that. So in the same way I do for the prone bridge arm marches that I've put in videos before, we're going to get the feet a little bit wider than you normally would for a push-up. And then just touching. And then the second one, slide over here and grab the kettlebell real quick. So, same type of thing. We're going to establish a wide stance. And I'm going to reach through, grab the kettlebell, and move it. So we got a couple more here. I am thankful to be standing up again. The ground-based stuff I think is definitely the most uncomfortable as well as hanging things, which I haven't really gotten into this for this video, but certainly another difficult one. So we're gonna do some around the worlds. You can do these with a plate. I like a bumper plate because it's bigger, but then you have lighter weight options, but you can also use a kettlebell or a smaller plate. So up here, and you're just gonna go around now you can go back and forth, or you can do a bunch of reps at once. And then reverse. And same concept, if you've ever looked at anything with the shoulder rock and techniques for that, you want tight glutes, you want to neutralize that rib cage engage your core make sure you're staying locked in and just showing it with a kettlebell and do it up like this and around and back it's a great exercise to do and then build off of with different progressions whether it be a bulgarian sandbag a mace shoulder rock, all of those are great tools to continue to further this ability and have it benefit your training. Final exercise for this video is just gonna be a basic plate rotation. Something I'll often throw in for a finisher, but you could also do it for a warm up. But we're just putting the plate out in front and then we're just gonna rotate. And you can add in raises, you could use a small 25, multiple 25 stacked on one another, do some, do some front raises, and then the rotations.
And I find that's just a good way to finish off the shoulders, get a movement that's a little bit uncharacteristic, but we are going to be in that horizontal plane. So building that stability there in the shoulder joint is definitely important. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. These exercises help you as far as where I'm going with my competitive focus and trying to kind of reset my body a little bit. This is what I'll be focusing on more. So I'll be sure to bring more content of this style to help everyone out. But if you have any questions, hit me up on Instagram or leave me a message on YouTube. Until next time, keep lifting those heavy weights. Hold strong.